Okay, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate what I call streaming data into a database. I'm going to use Python for that, Postgres, that's going to be my database. And I'm going to create an endpoint using Python and Flask, which will simulate a data store containing gigabytes or terabytes of information. Now, in this diagram, I've got two companies, company A and company B. Company B is perhaps me, and company A is the holder of the data that I want. And they provide a simple REST API to pull that data, but that REST API has a, an enormous response that may, rather than taking one second to download, will take say 20 hours to download it's just enormous amounts of data like i say gigabytes or terabytes and in this example i'll pretend it's transactional data like people spending money so I'll, what i'll do first is create the create what i call a mock a mock api which mocks company a let's start coding and so what i'll do is i'll fast i'll try and keep this video about 10 minutes so i'll fast forward a lot of the coding bits i do and if you want to see that code in more detail you can slow the video down and the code will also be on my github so what i'm doing here is creating just a a mock endpoint and i'm just putting in row count so i can just test various amounts of data being returned so what I'm going to do is rather than actually going to a third party and getting some, finding some API that returns enormous amounts of data in one request, I'm going to create a generator in, uh, in um, Python that will just do that for me. Um, just simulate that for me. Uh, Time.sleep, because I want to kind of simulate speed as well. Sometimes uh, the third party APIs are really fast and sometimes they can be really slow. Now that, that is my mock company A and it's a flask endpoint which is going to return gigabytes or terabytes of data. So now we'll test out this mock API. Mock API.py. Okay, so there we go. If we visit the URL. Okay, let's go and visit the very large request. And chuck in some rows. Okay, there we go. We've got some rows. Let's have a look at see what 100 does. Okay, so that's just spitting out data as uh, what I was defining here txid uid amount let's just make it much faster let's see what that happens see what happens i do that okay okay it's much faster so it can be really fast or really slow i'm just going to keep it quite slow so that we can see what's going on there we go so that's returning just rows of data as if they're transactions happening somewhere in each one of those that's a uuid for transaction id that's a uuid for a user and that's an amount three eight three thirty six is another amount and here's another amount that was just me creating a mock company a which which has the potential to return gigabytes or terabytes of data on a single get request so what i'm going to do now is company b so i'm going to be the the consumer of that data so i'm going to read that data using python and as soon as i get it every single row at a time i'm going to insert it straight into postgres and this is what i call streaming data into postgres okay so we'll uh create a new file called ingest So we're going to get all of that in one go first. So let's try that. Python ingest.py. All right. So that's that's pulling all the data 
at once and then processing it. But I'm going to do this line by line. Now, you can normally do this with files locally. You can read a file line by line and then execute each line or well, then process each line as you want. And that means you don't have to load the whole file into memory. And in this case, I just then I loaded the whole response into memory before I printed it. I'll do a something for a larger one just to demonstrate that it's you have to wait quite a while. And I could be processing this request right now, line by line. There we go. So I had to wait quite a while. And if that was 20 gigabytes of data, well, I'd be there forever. Anyway, so to process each of those those rows line by line, I'll start by adding this stream option, which means I can now iterate as the data is coming in. Chunk size equals one. This is important because I'm searching for a uh, the end of line character, which. Um, I created here in the mock API, which happens to be slash n, but you might have a different indicator that you can use for an end of line. Now, I'm, what this will give me is a tuple, because uh, see what I'm yielding here is what looks like a tuple in the mock API. So ingest. Okay, T eval buffer. So we'll just first we'll just print print T just to see that what I've got so far is at least reading from the, the mock API. So let's just start that up again. Okay, there we go. So there's all the rows. And We can see, so I printed out a hundred up there. So I'm it's rather than me waiting for all those hundred to be returned and then spitting them all out in one go, I've just written them to the console as I get them. And this, uh, just to show you on this on the mock API side, I'll just print print uh, txid just so we can see some something on the left there. When um whenever I make a request, okay. So you can see on the left it's generating new rows, and on the right I'm getting those new rows, and I'm just writing them to the console. Now, rather than writing those to the console, I can write them straight to a Postgres database, which I'm going to do right now. So I'm now going to create a database on Postgres called Stream Test. Okay, this is Postgres, PG Admin 4. I'm going to uh, right click in here, create database, and I'm going to call it Stream Test. Very good, save. Okay, so I'm going to create a table in it. Create a new table. I'm going to call this table Transactions. And it's going to have some columns, and it's going to have an ID. Excellent, so save that and make the, the ID a primary key. Save, excellent. So let's uh, view the data, view the table there, see what it looks like. There's no data in that table. So let's go and put that, each of these new rows directly into that table. So that should now actually run should actually save these new rows straight into the database but let's see what errors i've got okay that looks like it's working straight away excellent so if we go so if we look at postgres and let's just execute that there we go that's all my new new data in the table there so as soon as i was reading data from that mock third-party API and I can figure out the separation of every single row I just inserted that straight into the database and so here we go here's all the monetary values um, and the UIDs and the TXIDs this is your third-party company A has loads of data and you want the data you want to process it as soon as you can and this is me company B and I'm 
using Python to read the data, inserting it into Postgres. Now, while I'm here, rather than, because I've got this script in the middle of the whole process here, which reads the data on a streamed request, I can do a quick little bit of analysis on that. I can say, for example, T, um, if uh, T2 is greater than 900, I could uh, print you are our cool customer. For example, let's see if there's any, any of those comes out. Star, star, star. Let's try that again. Oh, yes, you're a cool customer. There we go, a couple of cool customers there. They're my important customers. And if I want to know about who they are right now, I can just, you know, send that off to a, say, call a hook on some other some other system, such as Slack, you know, call a Slack hook or something. Doesn't matter. So the next important thing is uh, what we'll do is I'll increase this up say say to something a little bit more like what i was talking about at the beginning maybe a maybe a billion billion records or something so i'm going to get a billion records back and the, and the mock api is going to return a much faster say 10 times faster than what it was and then what we'll do we'll so we'll watch uh postgres okay so we're now just ingesting loads of data pretty quickly now Let's have a look at Postgres. Test dashboard and what, what the dashboard's doing. Transactions, commits, rollbacks. It's doing loads of transactions now. Two pulls in, two pulls out. Oh, this is quite good. It's, uh... Now let's just uh, create a, do our own little, little test as well. Query tool. Um, and select out all, all from transactions. See what that tells me. 7,000 records, 7,280 records. And now, if you're ever in this situation and, and you are having to ingest that much data, you're gonna have other problems. But anyway, you can see it's happening. You can see uh, on the left hand side here is the generator generating just random stuff pretending to be a third party and on the right here is my company b which is just as soon as it gets that data it's putting it into the database ready for the next stage thanks for watching remember to like comment subscribe and share